Hi, I'm Joe Stopka, and I'm the Vice President of Sales and Business Development for Tascam, and we're going to talk about the Model 24. And I just want to give you a brief overview because many people have been asking a lot of questions about this, and so this will be a, just an overview of the entire product right now. I'll take you from input to output and tell you a little bit about how you set up the recordings and use playback and use it for a live console. So the first thing to know is that it is an analog mixing console that also has a digital multi-track recorder built into it and also has a USB audio interface. The USB audio interface is multi-channel, so you, all of the inputs and the main output, left and right output, will go separately on separate tracks that you assign to in your digital audio workstation on your computer. So let's talk about it as an analog mixer first. Each, there are actually 16 mic pre's. There are 12 mono line or mic inputs. And then the last four mic uh, channels, or last four channels, are either mono microphone or stereo line inputs. So that's how you get 20 inputs if, if, with the uh, microphone inputs and the line inputs. And then there's also one of my favorite channels is a Bluetooth channel. But it's more than just a Bluetooth channel. It also has a couple of different stereo line inputs. One is an eighth inch mini stereo plug, or you can go in through the RCA stereo inputs. So let's go back to the very front of this mixer. The first two channel at channels actually have analog inserts, OK? So you can actually insert any type of processor or effect if you wanted to, either for line input or the mic input. As you go down, the next stage is that you have your gain control for optimizing your input gain. Right below that is a low cut filter. Some people call it a high pass filter. And that's a low cut at 100 hertz. And then there's, on the first two channels, you also have an instrument level, which changes the actual input impedance and level of the line input. So if you wanted to plug a bass guitar or a keyboard or a, a regular guitar or acoustic electric guitar, you could plug it in and you would engage that instrument switch on these first two channels. Right below that is the, the uh, actually the routing source. So you have live, so that would be the live input channel from any one of the line or microphone inputs. Or you have your return from your PC, that would be from your recording software, or from the multi-track recorder that's built in over here on the SD card, which we'll get to in a little bit. Right below that, on the first 12 channels, we have a one knob compressor. So it's very simple just for uh, basically taming uh, you know, a very dynamic signal. You want to keep it within a certain range so it doesn't overload the input. Or you obviously, compressors can be used for coloration or character of a, the tonality of the sound. Great for vocals, instruments, and, you, know, you like drums or, or guitars or bass, any, any of that. It's really effective. Uh, one nap compressor, easy to use. You don't get into too much trouble. You just dial it into where you like the way it sounds, and that's uh, or all the way to the left is just the it's uh, it's not engaged. Right below that, on the first 12 channels, is a three-band EQ with sweepable mid frequencies. So it's cut or boost minus minus 15 or plus 15 dB on all three of these, and then uh, the top frequency of the on the EQ is 12K. The lowest one is at 80 hertz. And then the mid-band is sweepable from 100 hertz all the way up to 8K. And that's on the first 12. We go over to the last four, because these are also stereo channels. You get three-band uh, EQ, but the mid-band is uh, fixed frequency. The reason why is because when you have a stereo signal, <clears throat> if you were using a stereo source on that, you would not want to have a sweepable mid because you could have some, basically either some phase shifting that would occur in that center of the stereo signal. So whenever you have a stereo source, that's why we've chosen to go with a fixed frequency in the mid band. Let's go back over to the front again here. Now we're down to the, the aux section. We have two auxes that are mono sends. Uh, they can be used either for foldback, like a like in a live application. You would use this for your your monitor mix, either your in ear feed or if you had uh, monitor speakers on stage. The next uh, aux here 
The third one feeds actually our built-in uh, internal digital effects processor. We have a digital effects processor, we'll get to in a little bit, that has 16 preset uh, effects, and uh, you'd feed that signal on each channel to that effects processor via the third control here. Down from there, we have our pan control. So in your live application or in your mix down from your recording application, you can use this as a full pan left and right. Again, the first 12 are going to be pan. The last four here are stereo signals. So you would actually, if you had a stereo input source, you'd be shifting the overall stereo image from all the way to the left to center would be full left and right stereo, and then all the way to the right, you shift that stereo s signal all the way over to the right. Then the next uh, control you have, as you can see, these are blinking. I have, I'm in a record ready mode right now. <coughs> record ready, it's flashing. Now, one of the things about the recording is that you can record all 24 tracks simultaneously. And then uh, if you want to overdub, you can overdub up to eight tracks at one time. So if I was in an overdub mode, I would just, and I wanted, let's say drums, where you might have anywhere from five, six, seven, eight elk tape microphones, you could overdub just those, those eight channels like that. Quite simple. The next, the next section is there's a, there's a mute switch here. Quite simple, and you can see that you do get a light indication when you're in there, so it's a good visual right away. And then right below that, we have a 100 millimeter fader, nice long throw fader for great detail control of your mix. Right below that are your output assignments, so you can go main, would go right to the main master output. Then you have, we have a sub assignment, so over here is a stereo sub mix. So like, for example, in my mix on the track that I have here, I'm submixing all the drums to this, then I can control the overall level of the drums in relationship to the other tracks that I have recorded. So now what's neat about this is that we have actually outputs up here for the sub outs, left and right. And what you could do with this is that, let's say you wanted to uh, add more tracks than we have here. You could assign a bunch of uh, your, your input tracks to the sub, take the output from here, patch it over into uh, one of the stereo inputs, put that one into record and mix all your tracks and basically it's like good old-fashioned bouncing tracks like we would do with the tape machine in the old days. So that w then that went you, you, once you'd move those tracks over you'd record you'd hit record on that track and then you'd play back your other uh, tracks that you've recorded on the other inputs and then mix it down to there and then you then would have access to start recording again and overdubbing on all the tracks that you've just moved over to that stereo mix. And uh, the last one here, the last button on each of these, is called PFL. That's a pre-fade listen. So when you would engage that and monitor that, by the way, you would only be listening to the pre-fade listen through either the control room or the headphone output. It would not interrupt the main output because if you wanted to check the signal in a live application, you wouldn't want that PFL to mute the entire mix out the main output. So you'd be monitoring the PFL signal via the control room or the headphone output. So now Pete, let's just talk briefly about pre-fade listen. Again, pre-fade listen, when you engage it and monitor, it's before the fader, so no matter what you would be doing here with the fader, would not interrupt that pre-fade listen. Mainly what you're doing is you're listening to the signal through the EQ, mic pre, compressor, through the EQ, just to get an idea if you have any gain issues or distortions. So that, by the way, pre-fade listen is not, does, is not a solo in place. So when you press this in, you're going to hear a mono signal straight up in your headphones or in the control room monitors. If you, have this, if you have this particular channel panned one way or the other, you're not going to hear it panned one way or the other in pre-fade listen. It is just a mono signal coming from the mic pre in the EQ. So just to make sure that that's clear, pre-fade listen, is, that's how that works. Now, let's go down the channel over here. You know, I'm going to go over to the Bluetooth channel. You're going to notice that the Bluetooth channel, you can feed that signal not only to the main or to your submix, you can also use the auxiliaries here. So if you were using, let's say you had on a, on a mobile device uh, that had Bluetooth, you had a backing track. You could, you could play it, receive it through Bluetooth, and then you could feed some of that signal into your monitors. So if you had uh, your vocal mic or your instrument mics on some of the other channels, you'd be able to hear that in the, in the monitors so you could play along. 
I like to use the Bluetooth channel for a metronome that comes off of my, uh, uh, I have an app on my phone that I can use that uh, allows me to feed uh, that uh, click track or a metronome or maybe a little drum part or something like that and I can listen to it in the monitors uh, in, in my headphone mix or on my stage mix right through feeding the signal from there over. Now you notice we don't have an effect ascent on that channel because obviously what you're probably bringing in here is already pre-processed. Uh, another great application of this is that maybe you're learning a song with your band. Uh, you can feed the, the song off of Spotify or YouTube or something like that. And then you can mix, you can hear that in the mix and then you, you could perform along with that track. It's great for, you know, for a band to learn the tunes earlier and learn how to mix in and, and maybe uh, replicate the way the original recording was and, and play along with it. So it really works well for learning songs that way. I know in my band we, we do that a lot. So, But you can also record that signal. So you do have full recording capability of that signal via Bluetooth. Something else you should know is that you could have the Bluetooth running. You could also have these two stereo inputs running simultaneously. They are all at unity gain. So you would have to, to mix these three signals together. You would control them from the source device. Like So for example, if you're bringing in uh, an audio source on Bluetooth, you would like say a, a mobile phone or an iPad or something like that, you would control the output level on that device. Same thing with these, you would have to control the output level from the device or mix the, these two units, let's say you have a phone here and another mobile device here and you can mix them, you can do that as well. The other thing too is even though the, these only have RCAs, this could be another stereo line input source you would just obviously need to use adapters. So if you're coming off of another mixer, like a keyboard mixer or some other sub mixer, you, you could patch it into here without eating up any of your other mic channels. So that's, that's a really good extra little useful source for that. Okay, let's go over to um, the subgroup real quick here. This uh, allows you to, to uh, send your sub mix, like your drum mix or whatever you're sub mixing, to the main output. So then you would have it, it able to go out to the main output. By the way, if you want to mix these tracks, you have you see that we have actually 22 different input sources, 12 of them being mono, and then you have basically five stereos. That gets you up to 22. So where's tracks 23 and 24? That is your master interleave uh, stereo file that you'd see on the, on the SD card when you pull it out or it would show up as your, your mix bus on your DAW uh, out the USB channel, so, or out the uh, USB connection. Um, so if you want to mix down, you could, put the, you could put the Model 24 into record mode. I have my card and protect, so as you can see that it's going to protect. But you could actually, go, what you could do with this is you could, um, you could actually, if I went into record, Every time I go into record, it is always recording a left and right mix. So that's always working that way. Um, every time you go into record, even if you don't have anything else in record, if you go into record, you're always recording a left and right mix. So um, let's continue on here. You have mutes uh, on the outputs just like you do on the inputs. So you can mute that stereo a mix, that submix. You can also, these are the master faders for your auxes and they feed separate outputs that are up on your output panel up here. We'll go over that in a second. But that's, you, this will be your overall master fader for auxes one and two. Aux three, which feeds your effects device, is mastered right here. And then you can send any of your effects to mono, your, your auxes. So if you wanted to have some reverb in your monitor uh, stage mix or your headphone mix, you could use those to feed the effects signal into those. Um, let's just talk a little bit about the effects processor since we're here right now. There are 16 different preset types of effects. Small hall, large hall, rooms, plates, studio, uh, you know, live. There's short delays, a little longer delays, ping pong delays, chorus, and you can see what, how they're indicated there. How you select them is you press the select button and then you'll see up here in the screen, it's indicating that we're on 
program number five. And then you can turn the jog wheel, and you can see it'll go through, and you can select the various different effects that are there. Once you're in one of these effects, there is a basically uh, one more setting that you can go to right there, and that is just the length of the reverb or delay. So now I'm sitting, and it's just one parameter overall that would change. And you can see as I turn the jog wheel, it goes up or it goes down. So you can get some variation in that particular preset. And it's quite simple to use. You can turn that effect on or off. And I can go back over here to the main menu. And you can see that uh, you know it's, it's engaged right now. So um, what else can we tell you about here? The master fader. As we talked about, that controls the overall output level of the main output, but at the same time, it also controls the, the level of the master left-right stereo recording that uh, goes into your internal SD card. So here's the SD card slot. If you go to our website at uh, www.taskm.com and go to the Model 24 page, there's a, a very long list of recommended media. Uh, there are some really good quality media and there are some not so good quality media. We, we test uh, just about everything we get our hands on, so make sure that you check out what our recommended media list is. Let's go up to the EQ section here, graphic EQ. Typically nowadays uh, for, main, for your main outputs for a live application, you'll find that a lot of the speakers today are powered speakers and they have processing in them. So you might not necessarily use this for your main output, but what I've, I recommend regularly is that you can assign this either to the main or to your monitors, your aux aux, and you can use this maybe to get a little bit more gain before feedback in your monitors so you can notch out some particular frequencies that may be problemsome uh, for your fullback monitors. Also, on your, uh, you can also use it on your mix, your final mix for your SD card, uh, and so you can engage that by putting it into the main. So you can see down here, uh, pressed in is for the monitors one and two, and up is for the main output, and then you can have EQ in or out. So that's available there. There's a foot switch jack here. What that allows you to do is to do punch in and punch out hands free. So for the singer songwriter who's working on their own and doing maybe overdubs and that, you can uh, you have a standard momentary switch that will allow you to uh, engage the recording, punch in, punch out, start, stop. And we have a, a foot switch called the FS1 that is available. Uh, and uh, you can see that on our website. All the quarter inch jacks are tip ring sleeve, three, you know, three conductor. Uh, so they are, they're, even though on quarter inch, they are balanced signals. And that's the big overview on the Model 24. We'll get more in detail in every section of the mixer, but for more information right now, you can go to our website, www.taskam.com.